Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my free training on Alien Skin Exposure X4. Please remember to share this video, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. One thing that has always bothered me about Lightroom is that there's not an effective way to add realistic bokeh or lens blur in post-production. That's really something that you have to capture in camera. And most often we like to have that bokeh or lens blur on a portrait. Well, sometimes the conditions aren't conducive to allowing you to do that in camera. For example, we have this image here that I found on Adobe Stock. Now, Maybe the photographer wanted a lot of depth of field in this image, and if so, that's fine. But let's just pretend that the photographer really wanted shallow depth of field, but wasn't able to capture it because it's so bright. It's so bright, the photographer wasn't able to use a larger aperture, and they didn't have an ND filter. Of course, an ND filter would allow the photographer to use that larger aperture in the brighter sunlight. So... They had to shoot, let's say, at f8, f11, something like that, and they have a lot of depth of field. Well, with Exposure X4, there's actually a filter that does a really nice job of introducing realistic lens blur or bokeh. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, I, as I mentioned, I pulled this image off Adobe Stock, and the filter I'm talking about is the bokeh filter. So we're going to click on that. And there's different types of filters you could do. There's the radial filter, which we'll be using for this image. Uh, then we have two different types of graduated filter, a double graduated filter and a single plane graduated filter. Now, really, when you use the bokeh filter, what I suggest you do is go right to a preset to start, and then you could adjust from there. And that's what I'm going to do. So if we click on the drop down, you can see there's a lot of different presets. First of all, there's just creative aperture. And if you hover over these, you'll get an effect. You'll see what it does. So there's like a diamond boost the highlights, heart boost highlights, and so on. Then there's motion blur. And many times we want to add some type of motion to the image for a creative effect. Or maybe you want to make a look like a, a tires are turning or something like that. And you could do that there. Now, what I'm going to do for this one is traditional lenses. And you can see there's a number of different traditional lenses. And one of my all-time favorite portrait lenses is the Nike or the I'm sorry, the Canon 85mm f1.2. And we have two flavors of that. We have that with an using an f-stop of 1.2 and that same lens using an f-stop of 5.6. And just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to pick the 1.2 because that one is the most blur and it's going to take the most readjusting to make it look nice on this image. So I'm going to pick that one and you can see it's a radial filter. So there it is. And you can see once it renders, it looks horrible. So we have to kind of fit it to our image. And if you look very closely on this inner circle, you'll see that there's handles. There's a handle there. There's a handle there. So what we could do now is we could just draw this out and make it so the plane of focus is on our model like that just like that so i just basically turn the circle into an oval and you can see now the plane of focus is our model now between the solid circle and the dotted circle on the outside that's the transition zone and i want that to be greater i don't want to be that to be as abrupt so i'm going to just draw this out and you'll see that it will make a, a more gradual transition from the in-focus part to the out-of-focus part. And we'll bring that one in a little bit. Now, of course, it's way too blurry. It just doesn't look right. So we'll go down to the adjustments now and, you know, and make it look or fit our image. First of all, at f1.2, it has a mount way up. So we really can't be at f1.2. It just doesn't look right. So we're going to pull the amount down. And once it renders, you could get an idea what it looks like. And I kind of like it right there. Now, with zoom, what it will do, it will take the edges of the blur and it will just kind of zoom it out. And let me pull it. And you can see how it kind of zooms it out. It kind of stretches it out, more or less. And I think I like a little bit of zoom on, on the image. Not a lot, just a little. Twist will add a twist to it. And sometimes 
you don't really see it as much, but you can see there's a little bit of a twist there. See if it renders. Nah, eh, it didn't do much. So it doesn't do much all the time. They're kind of in the middle. Go the other way. There it goes. See that kind of twist it did? Um, maybe we'll do a little bit of a twist just for the sake of argument. Next is creamy. How much, how blurry do you want it? That's really what creamy is. So when you move it to the right, it just makes it more blurry. It's kind of like a mount, but not quite. And if we go to the left, you'll see it won't be as kind of creamy. It's more uh, distinct to what the edges are back in there. So we'll leave that relatively high. And for this specific preset, curvature doesn't matter. So that obviously won't do anything here. Also, the rotation is only for those circular blurs. So this is inactive as well. Now, the actual diaphragm of the camera, for the preset, an 85 millimeter f1.2, it's showing it's perfectly round. You could click on that and change it. So if you want like a heart, it'll just make your bokeh a little different when you choose these different shapes. So we'll stay with the circle. Now, the highlights. Do you want the highlights to be brighter in the blurry areas? If you do, jump down to boost and go that, move that to the right. And what you'll see, it'll kind of blow out those highlights. Now, in the case of this image, and you could change the threshold as well to make it affect more of the midtones or less of the midtones. Uh, for this image here, I'm not going to do that. Also, you could add grain, and this only adds grain to the blurry parts. So you turn strength up. And you'll see where it's blurry is now has grain. And where, you know, you could change the size and all that. So on this image, I'm not going to do that as well. So as I look at the image, I actually like the blur going to the model's left. So to the uh, photographer's right, I really like that, that effect there. But over here, I don't like it at all. And quite frankly, you know, every photographer is different and there's no right or wrong way. But if I was shooting the shot, I wouldn't have had the model in the middle. I would have had the model to the left and I wouldn't have had all this real estate over here at the left. So for the sake of my style, I'm just going to crop it. And I don't mean an insult to the photographer that took it. Like I mentioned, everyone is different. So I'm just going to go to the aspect ratio and make sure that it's a free form crop. And I'm just going to come over here and pull this into the in from the left and have my model on the left hand rule of thirds so she's on the left side of the image and then i'll close the crop tool and i think that looks pretty realistic you could see how the blur goes out you could always come back in and go back to bokeh and go back to our our uh, actual bokeh that we just did and you could come and readjust things and make it fit better and fiddle with it. And I think it's really very, very realistic. I think it does a real, really nice job. So I hope that helps you um, add some bokeh to your images when you weren't able to capture it in camera. And as I mentioned, many times it's just too bright to use a wide open aperture and not, we might have forgot to bring ND filters or we don't have them. Or it's hard to have an ND filter that fits every lens you have. Maybe you're using a lens that is uh not the you know size filter size of the nd filters you happen to own and you don't have step up or step down rings or whatever i mean there's a dozen reasons but hopefully this helps you add that bokeh to your images that need it and i'd just like to thank you for watching my videos i really do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon thank you so much for watching please remember to like and share this video and please subscribe to my youtube channel also Visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find thousands of totally free videos and articles to help you with your photography.